Uh, welcome everyone uh, to uh, uh, Campbell University's PGA Golf Management uh, Prospective Student Webinar. Um, this is our first time doing this, so please bear with us. Uh, I, I think uh, we know how to talk about the program. Uh, hopefully the technology will not fail us tonight. So uh, I do know that uh, uh, we need to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Ken Jones. I'm director of the PGA Golf Management Program at Campbell University. I'm in year 24, and a little bit about myself. I'm uh, from upstate New York originally. Uh, actually went to school at a place called Ferris State University for PGA golf management, and uh, found my way to North Carolina as a result of my last internship and have been around this area ever since. And again, I'm in year 24 with, uh, with the university and the PGA golf management program. So I'm going to have uh, Kevin uh, introduce himself. Kevin's our assistant uh, director and internship coordinator. Go ahead, Kev. Yeah, my name is Kevin Nagy. Um, I am in year seven at, uh, at Campbell. Um, I'm an alumni of the program. I graduated in 2014. Uh, I was out for about six or seven months. And uh, Mr. Jones here uh, gave me a phone call and said, hey, why don't you come take this job? Um, and I said, yeah, OK, that sounds like something I'd like to do. So I started about three weeks later um in the fall of 2015 uh so i'm in year 17 or seven now um so i do all the internships i teach classes i do kind of jack of all trades sort of thing so um it's it's good to be at campbell i've been at campbell for 11 years both as a student and as a, uh, a professor so all right i, I will oh, say on. I will say, as Mr. Jones, you're going through your uh, your presentation here. If everyone uh, has a Q&A button down at the bottom of their screen, I'm going to be in that Q&A. If something pops up that you have a question about, um, I'm going to try to be over there answering those as we go along. All right. That sounds great. So I, I think we'll be on here. I've got uh, a few slides to, uh, to cover today, and I think we'll be probably here for about an hour. Depends on how quickly I talk, and hopefully I won't get sidetracked at all, so... Uh, let's get started. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but Campbell University started as a university, uh, actually started as Bowie's Creek Academy in 1887, so we've been around a long time. Uh, some uh, publications say some nice things about us, uh, say we're one of the top uh, universities in the South. Uh, you'll also see us ranked in the Wall Street Journal uh, college ranking. This one's from 2019. I think the, the 2021 ranking was actually the same, and I got lazy. I didn't add the, uh, the new ranking in there. But uh, for private universities, uh, Campbell is number five in the state. When you add in there uh, the public schools, uh, UNC Chapel Hill and, of course, NC State, uh, we fall down to number seven. But uh, I think you've heard of those schools before, which is kind of cool. We're in uh, kind of an elite company there. Um, if you don't know where Campbell University is, we're kind of smack dab right in uh, central North Carolina. Uh, we're not very far from anywhere. And uh, one of the greatest places we're not very far from is Pinehurst. It's a little over 50 minutes away. And of course, all the great golf there. Um, if you're concerned about great golf, great. Uh, there is great golf in, in Raleigh also. Uh, Greensboro area has a lot of uh, great courses also. Here's a nice slide of uh, kind of explains uh, how many students are at Campbell. Uh, undergrad uh, totals are around uh, 3,900. And of course, that includes main campus and then all the extended campuses that uh, we do uh, uh, have students at. Uh, graduate level programs, uh, for instance, in uh, on main campus, we've got graduate uh, uh, programs in uh, medicine. Um, also have a, a pharmacy program and law programs. Here, so you can see the student numbers there. A little over 6,100 uh, total students, though. Here's a slide that uh, you'll you'll definitely be interested in. 90% uh, of students are receiving some sort of financial aid. Um, you can see what the average uh, student is uh, coming in with a high school GPA and the average uh, SAT and ACT scores there. And of course, uh, one of the things you want to really be concerned with, uh, if you're going to choose a small school to go to, you want a good student to faculty ratio, which we do have. And of course, the uh, small class sizes are super important. Of course, the maximum size of the lecture halls is, is part of that. Uh, we've got smaller uh, lecture halls. And of course, we're only putting 20 to 25 students in there. One of the things about uh, PGA Golf Management is that you go through everything as a cohort. 
meaning that the size of your incoming class is going to be the maximum size class that you will be in throughout the, the time you're in the program. So if you enter with uh, 25 students, that's going to be the size classes you're going to have in our program. Uh, here's some additional uh, information for admissions. Of course, uh, uh, on the left, you'll see that uh, application's free if you have not applied yet. Uh, it's easy to jump on Campbell's main website and go to uh, admissions. The application is uh, uh, a link is there multiple times. Uh, uh, another part of this is to uh, upload your official transcript from your high school. And then, of course, all your uh, testing scores there also. You'll see uh, scholarship uh, benchmarks are, are there. In order to get any amount of scholarship, you have to have a SAT a score of at least 980. And then, of course, those GPAs or the, the ACT composite scores there that are shown. Uh, definitely uh, interested in, uh, in this slide here with the scholarship amounts. Uh, the minimum scholarship we get uh, uh, based on that last slide was going to be $9,000. That'll be what's called a Scott Ellis scholarship. Uh, presidential level scholarships are uh, worth up to 22000 for the academic year. And of course, there's also some uh, endowed uh, uh, scholarships that are going to be based on uh, uh, merit, I meaning that if you do well in school, you've got a high GPA, and then you might be in line for some of those scholarships also. Uh, I'll tell you, it is not inexpensive to uh, be a student at Campbell University, so there is the cost of attendance. That would be if you paid and did not have any financial aid or scholarships. So if you just walked in the door without any uh, additional money uh, being taken away, that's what the one year would cost you at the university. And of course, when you start uh, looking at all the scholarship uh, levels you'll, you'll have, then that's gonna come down significantly. Now there are additional fees that our students pay uh, as PGA golf management students that the normal uh, Campbell students aren't gonna pay. And of course it shows up there in the golf management access fee. Uh, that's going to uh, get your golf course access, uh, all the balls you want to hit, and all the, all the golf rounds you want to play. Uh, there are also fees associated with the PGA's education program. Uh, every semester that you're on campus, you'll pay $560, and that takes care of all the seminars, all the books, all the materials you need there, and any testing fees that you have. Uh, here's a great slide about the School of Business. Of course, uh, PGA Golf Management is housed in the School of Business. You'll see our other programs are also there. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, kind of makes uh, Campbell's program unique is the fact that uh, our business school also has the only undergraduate trust and wealth management uh, program in the nation. And so there's only 18 schools that do PGA Golf Management right now, and there's only one school that does trust and wealth management. So the uh, uh, we've got some niche programs in the School of Business, and, uh, and of course, employers are, are coming to the school on, on that basis, definitely. Uh, another great slide about the, about the business school here. One of the things I really want to talk about on this slide is the four plus one BBA MBA option. Um, students that are looking for the additional schooling are going to be in line to earn their Master's of Business Administration. And what that four plus one really means is that you're paying four years of undergrad tuition and one year of graduate level tuition, and you will really earn two degrees in five years of time uh, on campus. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to put you in line for making more money and getting a, a bigger job faster. And I always tell our, our golf management students that, you know, initially, uh, if you get through the five years of education, earn your BBA and MBA, you're probably going to be the person at your facility that has the most education. And you're per, it's probably not going to relate back to pay immediately. But eventually, when you get some uh, years under your belt and are rising up through the ranks uh, uh, at the golf facility, then that MBA is going to really pay off. It's going to put you in line for director of golf jobs have professional jobs, general manager jobs a lot faster than if you didn't have that second degree. So I think that's really important. Some of the other things that, uh, that we've got at the School of Business is uh, we have a dedicated career services uh, uh, department that's gonna help you with uh, resumes and, and uh, interviewing skills. We really have an emphasis on entrepreneurship uh, at the university. And of course that's gonna uh, uh, really show out in a lot of the classes, the business classes and management and marketing classes. Um, 
And of course, our students are on paid internships. So that's always important. Some of the other programs are unpaid internships, which um, is really nice for the for PGA golf management students <clears throat> to go out there and, and work and then have a nice wage and, and, and do some other things also. A, uh, every student is going to be concerned with uh, on-campus housing. Uh, I believe it's three years that you have to stay on campus. And so we guarantee you housing there. Um, uh, the, the picture in the lower left is Pat Barker Hall. That's a female uh, freshman dorm. And I think we're showing uh, one of the dorm rooms there for the, for the ladies. Um, there is obviously internet there. There's laundry services and that sort of thing. You're going to get those same things uh, no matter what school you're going to pick there. Uh, I do think that uh, in order for you to be housed with another PGA golf management student, uh, you're going to have to put their name on your application form. When, when the housing forms come out and they would have to put your name on their form in order to get you paired up if you want to room with another PGA golf management student. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be, you're going to be placed in general housing with uh, a whole bunch of people that are outside your major, which is, all, which is also going to be a good thing. You don't want to only have uh, friends in PGA golf management and not have any friends outside of the, uh, outside of the program. All right, uh, students are also concerned with uh, dining options. Uh, we've got many. Uh, we actually have the only Chick-fil-A uh, in Harnett County right here on campus, which is kind of cool, it's really cool. Uh, Gaylord's Kitchen is uh, what the, the dining services is, is called at the uh, Student Union Building. And there's a lot of different lines that are available there. One of them is, uh, uh, it looks like a salad line or a breakfast line or a, a taco line. So there's a whole bunch of different options there. I think uh, the Italian line is also there. But uh, oddly, we have a Starbucks inside of uh, our library. And so I think that uh, gets a lot of people to go into the library. Um, uh, I can tell you it smells good when you walk in the door. So that's that's pretty cool. And uh, of course, you'll you'll figure all that stuff out when you uh, when you get here on campus. Ah, uh, lots of student activities. Of course, we're showing uh, our football team coming out of the, the field house there. But hey, there's Greek life uh, opportunities. Uh, some of our students uh, have gotten into that. Um, there's lots of different uh, student clubs and intramural sports. Uh, a lot of times, the, I, I know they, they play flag football. They're doing a lot of stuff with uh, basketball, and they'll have a league that only has PGM teams in it. And of course, then we also have uh, NCAA Division One sports also. So if you if you're a sports fan, you get a lot of opportunities to uh, to go watch uh, our home team. Uh, some other student activities. Uh, if you like mud volleyball, uh, we have the cleanest mud in Harnett County. Uh, <laughs> personally, I wouldn't do that, but okay, looks like a fun thing, and they always have that in the, in the welcome week. Uh, set of activities. Um, I think uh, the concert down there might be Switchfoot, a uh, uh, rock band that's uh, been here actually a couple times in my 24 years that, uh, that I've been here. So they're always a good show. Uh, of course, here's the athletic stuff here, 21 teams, 10 men's sports and uh, 11 uh, lady sports. Uh, here are those, uh, the different sports. I know uh, right now uh, we're kind of near the end of the soccer uh, uh, seasons for both men and women. And I know both of our uh, men's and ladies teams won the regular season already, which means they're going to be seeded number one in the playoffs, which means they'll have home games for the playoffs, which means there's a pretty good chance that they're going to win the conference and then get the NCAA bid. So um, we've, uh, in the last two years, we've won what's called the Sasser Cup, which is uh, for the best athletic program in the Big South. And that means that we've won the most championships and we've finished the highest of all the schools when you combine all the sports together. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I love the picture on the lower right here. We've got two of our PGA golf management students. It looks like they're walking over uh, to the football stadium for a, for a day game there and they're fired up. And that's what it's about to uh, to be a, a student on campus and, and go to these football games and, and really have a great time. 
Uh, I love the uh, Pope Convocation Center. This is where the basketball arena is. Uh, inside, it seats around just over 3,000. Uh, when, uh, when it's full, it is crazy inside. So there's a, a great atmosphere. Of course, here's Barker Lane Stadium for the, for the football team. It uh, is said to be the number one uh, um, stadium in the Big South. Uh, I know it's uh, it seats around 5,500, I believe, is the is the total number. And so again, we'll have a home field advantage when uh, when the team's at home there. All right, some uh, things about how to apply to to Campbell University here. Uh, again, we're on a rolling admissions basis, which means that we'll accept uh, applications right up until like the the week before uh, classes start in August. And so. As long as uh, you've got everything in, they'll make an acceptance decision really fast. If you found us late and, or you decide to, to, to change what you're doing, then we can get you in for sure. Uh, one of those bullet points says, hey, students will receive their admissions decision typically within 14 days. If you've got all your documents in admissions has all that stuff, then they're going to make a decision pretty quickly. Um, the next step after that is once you get your, uh, your acceptance is to uh, complete uh, uh, a, a subsequent uh, application phase for PGA Golf Management, which is really truly only just a, a, a small application. And then there's a handicap verification form uh, that you also have to fill out. All right. Uh, uh, and again, of course, Usually before uh, students are making the uh, decision that they're going to join us, they're going to at least walk on campus and visit us uh, at least one time. So but we do recommend going through the admissions department to do this. Um, you can go online. There's a nice link right there. Of course, if you uh, got onto the admissions page and said uh, you want to make a campus visit, they've got a scheduling tool there. It's really easy. I know the visits are, are any day they're taking visits, so they're going to have an 11 o'clock or a 3 o'clock visit time. And so sign up for one of those. Anytime you're, you're coming on campus, you let the admissions folks know, and they'll make sure that uh, they'll have a time for you to come over and speak with us in the, in the business school. And we'll also have an opportunity to see you at the golf course and then uh, put you on the golf course also. All right, some information about PGA Golf Management. Uh, again, uh, I said this earlier, we're one of 18 accredited programs with the PGA of America. Um, not all the schools are based in uh, the business school. So of course, our degree program is gonna be a Bachelor of Business Administration degree. Our major is PGA Golf Management. Uh, some of the other programs are gonna be in like Parks and Recreation, uh, I know uh, other programs are in, are in hotel and hospitality. Maybe it fits for those schools, but I really think the golf business is all about running a business and our business happens to just be a golf facility. Um, it's about maximizing revenue and, and minimizing expenses. And of course, delivering what we call the PGA experience. And uh, so, and of course, we'll cover all that in the, in the PGA's education program. Hey, we're, we're kind of uh, unique. We've got uh, six full-time faculty members, really five full-time faculty members. Then we've got another adjunct uh, faculty member also, but uh, there are five of us who are PGA members. We also have our superintendent teaching uh, a turf grass class also. Um, all these programs have are, are alike. It doesn't matter whether you're our school or one of the other schools, but each of them requires students to complete 16 months of internship at the golf facilities around the country. Uh, once you're done with everything for our degree program, there is a direct election uh, opportunity into the PGA of America. If you're going to work in golf, then you're going to be directly elected as a PGA member um, once you do acquire that job. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat stuff there. Uh, so I always say, hey, why are you choosing Campbell? And I always talk about this. You're choosing it for a variety of reasons, I know, but there's really a couple main ones. And part of it's gonna be the people that you meet at the university and it's our students, it's our faculty, our, it's our faculty's experience, how we're delivering the PGA's education program. It's also the program uh, and how we're delivering that content of the education 
program and how we've got the 4-1 uh, BBA MBA option. Um, it's also how we deliver the PGAs uh, or the required internships, how we're delivering those 16 months within our program. Um, it's also about the playing ability uh, side of things that uh, we have a focus on, on improving our students' playing ability. And we do one of the ways we do that is by the PGM Student Association Tournament Series. Uh, we'll have a tournament every weekend for them to be able to play in. So, but uh, a job placement with, with our program is 100%. Within three months of graduation, you're going to have a job guaranteed. And honestly, um, a, lot of, a lot of students are going back to internship uh, sites that they've worked at in the past. And those are, are, are great opportunities for sure. But most students are going to have uh, their job secured before they leave uh, after graduation. So they're, they're not even having to look for jobs, truly. Uh, other things or other reasons why students are coming here is, um, well, it, it's our golf facility. I, I said the 27-hole golf facility is owned by the university. It's managed by PGA Golf Management uh, uh, Program and our faculty members. I'm the actual uh, general manager of the golf facility. And one of the things I did many years ago when they put me in control is to give our students access to the golf facility. Um, during the previous, uh, um, I guess, uh, director, uh, it was in charge of that. We had afternoon tea times for golf tournaments on the weekends. And a lot of times our students were, were telling me that they were not able to finish. So when I got uh, in control of the golf facility in 2009, that was one of the first things I changed is to make sure that our students could, could fulfill the, um, and complete their golf tournaments on the weekends. Uh, we have uh, students on uh, teeing off for golf tournaments as early as nine o'clock in the morning on some weekends. Um, so I don't think you're going to get that at, at uh, many of the other universities and, and have the access that you do for our, for our golf facility. All right, here are the uh, academics for the program. Um, every degree program, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're in uh, PGM, it doesn't matter whether you're in anything in, in business or any other degree program, whether it be religion or English or anything like that, you're going to have the general college core curriculum, which is going to be English, math, science, history, and then the Christianity classes. Um, since we're in the business school, there is a business common core, which is going to be your accounting, your business law, your economics. And of course, then we're going to get into marketing management classes. So all business majors are gonna take those classes. Um, we do have some open electives. I think we've got about uh, 12 hours of open electives for our students. And of course, the reason we're here is because of the PGA golf management uh, content. We deliver the PGA's education program in 16 classes. And I previously talked about the 16 months of internship that's required. Uh, some of the other requirements are uh, passing the playing ability test. Uh, which means you've got to have a credible game of golf. Uh, we're accepting students that have a handicap of 12 or better. And we think we can take somebody as high as a 12 handicap and then improve their game well enough to pass the PGA's playing ability test. Now, passing that is, uh, re requires men to shoot 156 from the white tee. Uh, white and black tee combination of around 6,400 yards. And then women have to shoot 157 from a course that measures around 5,500 yards. So um, it, most of you are going to put that into two different scores. Uh, for the men, you're going to say, hey, I can shoot 78 twice uh, from, from that tee. And, uh, and, and I agree, you can do that. But I'd rather have you think about winning the PAT and shooting even par for that. Uh, that's how we get better. We, we, we play as hard as we can and, and uh, try to beat the golf course. Uh, there's also uh, requirements for the PGA's education uh, program. There's required work experience that goes along with each of the subjects. There's seminars at each level, and then there are exams you have to, uh, to pass. You have to score 70% or better on these exams in order to move on to the next level. Um, if uh, unfortunately you uh, have a hiccup and you don't pass, then you get a retake opportunity 30 days later. So hopefully we won't have those opportunities, those retake uh, uh, chances or the need for a retake. All right, this uh, slide shows the PGA's uh, 3.0 education curriculum. 
Now I had to, it's 3.0 because there were previously 1.0 and 2.0. And I can tell you when I first started, there's a program called the uh, Golf Professional Training Program. So in my 24 years, this is the fourth uh, education program that the PGA has uh, asked us to deliver to the students. So they fine tune it, it gets better every time. Uh, in essence, though, it's kind of stayed the same in the fact that there are, is a qualifying level. And that's what I'm actually teaching right now. Uh, PGM 100 is a qualifying level material. It really gives you the basics about the industry. It talks a little bit about the PGA's uh, constitution. It talks a little bit about the rules. Uh, it talks a little bit about uh, career enhancement and how to get jobs and interview and, and, and that sort of thing, how to write a resume. Um, but it really talks about the industry in general and, and about working in the industry. At the end of this class, there's a test. You have to score 70% or better in order to get into level one. And you'll see our level one classes are uh, PGM 100 designated classes. There's four there. Once you get through that material, you go through all the classes, you do all the work experience, uh, you, you go through the seminars, and then you have to pass the tests. There's two tests at level one. You get through the teaching and coaching test and then the facility management test, and then you're on to level two. Uh, similar thing, there's four classes there. You'll do the work experience, you'll do the testing, and then there's seminars. You've got to go through that in order to get to level three. Uh, once you go through the level three stuff, we do have a capstone course, uh, uh, PGM 450. I get to teach that one. It's called Golf Cases and Problems. Um, some of you probably are already working at golf facilities. I always ask this question when we're doing um, in-person visits, whether uh, the operation runs smoothly at your golf facility. And inevitably, every, everyone says, no, it does not. Things go on. And so that's really what PGM 450 is about, is helping to, uh, I guess, give a voice uh, based on what's happening at other golf facilities and, and having an opinion based on your experience, things you've seen on internship. Um, um, so everyone's going to have a different opinion on how to solve problems. And that's really when a lot of learning, when we start talking about it in class, a lot of learning takes place. Here is the four and a half year sequence uh, that we deliver the 124 hours of what makes up the major. Uh, of course, the sequence includes the uh, 16 months of internship. And so you'll see the stuff that's in green. Classes in green are going to be the PGA golf management class. So you'll see the designation there, PGM. These are the semesters that these have to be taken. So you can't get out of order here. So this is the freshman level introductory stuff, PGM 100 here. Then you start level one classes here. You're gonna go into uh, a summer internship, three months in this semester. And then you come back for the uh, fall of year two, you're gonna finish level one's materials right here in classes. At the end of this semester, you're gonna take the level one tests in teaching and coaching, and then facility management. We assume you're gonna pass this and then we're gonna uh, dive directly into level two classes. Uh, the PGM 200 level classes start here. Uh, now what's a little bit different here is how we do the internships. After the second year, you're, uh, in the summer, in the fall of year three, we're gonna keep you off campus for a six month internship. This is how we're a little bit different than some of the other schools. So when you're on internship in this semester, we're asking that you do at least one online class. Now, in order to be listed as a student with Campbell or any school, you have to become a half-time student, which means you have to get the six credit hours in order to, if you're taking financial aid or, or taking out loans, um, you have to become listed as a student, so you do not go into loan repayment status. You do not want that. So you have to take some classes while you're on internship. You'll come back for one semester of year three, and this is where we're going to uh, finish the level two classes. And then once you're done with that, uh, we'll do the, the testing again. 
right there in uh, testing and teaching and coaching and then testing in uh, um, the facility management. And then we're going to send you on another long internship. Seven months here, we'll keep you off campus uh, starting around May 1st and then keep you off campus through the end of November. Um, again, you've got to take an online class plus the internship in order to get to the halftime status. You'll come back uh, for the spring of, of year four, and this is where we're going to deliver all of level three in one semester. Again, you'll have uh, seminars in this semester. You'll do work experience here uh, based on your previous 16 months of internship, and then we'll, uh, we'll do all the testing also. Um, I can tell you, you probably will still have some credit hours left. So you might want to take something over intern over the summer. Uh, some of our students have found that in this summer after their fourth year, where's my mouse go here? This summer right here, they might be a little short on the internship time, especially if they're uh, doing internships in the Northeast. Um, so we have three internships, a three month, a six month and a seven month. Now, if you did exactly the right amount, you'd have 16 months of internship. But occasionally students are going uh, to the Northeast and let's say they're gonna do a six month internship and they start May 15th and go through October 15th. Now, my math would say that that's probably five months. Um, May to June, June to July, it's five months. And so if they went back to that same facility for their seven month internship, and again, they were supposed to stay, let's say they're supposed to stay from May 1st until uh, the end of November, that, that'd be seven months, but they actually got there a little late in May and then stayed only until the end of October, they're gonna end up short of the 16 month uh, requirement. So a lot of students are going back to an internship site in the, in the summer of year four in order to get up and uh, get the correct amount of time in order to earn the 16 months. So uh, then they'll come back on campus and finish up all their academics. They'll also take this PGM 450 class, um, a couple of electives, uh, English uh, electives and, and other stuff will finish up here. Um, so, in the slide, I talk about the fact that you might be able to fast track stuff. Now, fast tracking might uh, be perfect for a transfer student. Um, and I say this because some students are, have, uh, have gone to a community college or, or another university when they find us. So um, if we have transfer students that have at least one full year of academic time, meaning maybe 24 or more hours, we might suggest that they're gonna fast track our program by combining what is happening in the spring semester of year two and the spring semester of year three. We're delivering the 200 level classes here in each of these semesters. They're not taught at the same time. So we uh, make sure that our students can be in those classes if they have to be. And so essentially that would alleviate one semester of, uh, of being here at the university. Uh, we're already fast tracking level three. So you can potentially shorten your, your stay by one full year, uh, which uh, financially and uh, economically, probably a really good thing. There are also students that come to us that have a lot of AP credits or dual enrollment uh, at community colleges while they're still in high school. So if you come to us with a lot of hours, then you may wanna ask your advisor whether uh, it'd be right for you to go ahead and fast track. And what we'll do is we'll just look at uh, where you're at and then we'll start mapping out what's happening. And of course you could even map out what's, uh, uh, or plan out all the classes in, in advance. Uh, after you've been here one semester, you'll have access to that. So we can make that happen if, if, it's, if it's the right fit for you. All right, so one of the things that uh, does differentiate us is those internships. Um, I've already talked briefly about it, the three, six, and seven month internships, but uh, choosing where you wanna go work is, is really important. And of course, right now our freshmen are starting to, to look at uh, where they're gonna go on three month internship. A lot of people wanna go home, but 
I know one of the things that uh, it, it costs a lot of money to go to different places, especially if you don't have a housing situation. And so if, uh, if you decide to go on a three month internship and go near your home, uh, it, it's okay, but I don't think it's the best experience uh, for you. Uh, I think it's time for you to go ahead and branch out and go to one of those places that you've always wanted to go to. We have opportunities all over the country where you could get uh, free housing, great wages, a great experience and meals. And if those situations are available, then I say take advantage of them. Uh, the golf professionals are gonna, that are going to have you for those experiences are someone that you definitely want to network with in the future uh, for employment. They're going to help set you up and put you into other opportunities. They're going to have you grow as a golf professional, and that's what it's really all about. Uh, the best places also are really – uh, concerned with you completing your work experience activities. And so you want to, you want a golf professional that's concerned about your development as a, as a future golf professional. You want them to be interested in what you're doing and, uh, and to help you along the way. So, um, usually I can tell you this, that, uh, once you've been on a great three month internship, you're going to, uh, make some contacts in the industry and we're going to, already have you and uh, you're going to be thinking about where you want to go in your six month internship. Also, what really happens is, is the students in the class above you start to, uh, uh, they really start uh, vetting uh, the students behind them for uh, placement at the facilities they're already at. And so the golf professionals are asking the students that they get to, Hey, help me find somebody else to come fill your spot next year. And so um, the students are, are going to put their name on uh, a replacement student. Obviously, they know that student's going to do a good job or else they're not going to recommend them um, to go work at a, a place where they might also be working in the future. I, I love the bullet point work and play at some of the world's best clubs. Uh, to say that uh, we are in some of the world's best clubs is an understatement. We are there. Um, if it's, if you want to go work in top 50 courses or top 10 courses, we're going to have some of the top 10 courses there. We're going to have a bunch of the top 50 courses and, uh, probably 70 of the top hundred courses. We've had students intern at in the past. Uh, you definitely have those uh, places available for you. And of course, some of the photos we've got here, maybe, you know, this is the photo of congressional. Uh, in this picture, we've got uh, two of our students uh, intern at, at Congressional. Um, we just had somebody at the church pews, the uh, Oakmont up in uh, Pittsburgh. So um, if you want to work there, we'll, we'll help you get the, your internships there. All right. Another uh, great uh, thing to talk about is Keith Hills. Of course, we've already discussed a little bit about uh, the fact we've got a 27 hole facility and you've got great access to it. Um, 18 holes were built in 1974, the original uh, golf course, uh, we call it now the orange and black rotation. Um, again, if you didn't know, it is owned by the Campbell University. Again, I'm the general manager of the facility. Uh, uh, in years past, we have been known as a four star uh, rated golf course by Golf Digest and also a top 100 value. And of course, that's based on uh, the the cost to play the facility and in, in a what a great condition we are. And so we're kind of proud of, the, of those designations for sure. Um, the top picture there is the uh, seventh hole in the orange course. Uh, it looks like we're looking at uh, uh, the ninth hole of the orange course. And then, of course, the ninth hole of the white course there. The, the white course is the newest course uh, that came on board in 2001. A lot of water on that course. But uh, Kevin hits that one in two all the time. Right, Kev? Yeah, it's like, uh, well, when we play for Monday Night League with our students. It's, uh, we play from the white tee, so it's a little easier. He usually plays downwind. It's about uh, driver seven iron, I believe. Um, assuming I don't miss my drive, but for the back tee, it's probably driver three iron. It's, it's definitely gettable. Yeah. All right. One of the things you'll note about uh, the university is the fact or the facility is that uh, we have a huge driving range facility, 32 acre practice facility. Um, 
it uh, our entire facility's got three putting greens. There's two pitching greens. Of course, the top pitcher right there is the the pitching green that's at the PGM end of the range. Uh, there's two bunkers uh, around that pitching green, and of course, 360 degree uh, 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 closely mown grass, so you can hit a lot of great pitch shots uh, in different lengths there. Uh, there are four bunkers. Uh, three of them are at our end of the uh, facility there, and then there's one bunker at the public. Uh, a portion of the facility too. Uh, the bottom left photo is the scoring triangle. And that is where our students work on their short game. And from the center of the T, the first uh, line of uh, flags would be the bottom of the triangle. And those are uh, roughly 45 yards from the center of the uh, T box. And then it'll go out uh, until you get to the white flag, which is at the hundred yard T or the hundred yards from the center of the uh, tee box there. Um, one of the things we have our students practice is hitting each of those targets with one golf ball before they can move on. And because uh, the scoring triangle says it all, I mean, those are your scoring shots. You better be proficient in those if you want to uh, be able to pass PT and, and, uh, and shoot low scores for sure. Uh, we do have Pro V1 practice balls. Uh, are, are available at the pitching area and then on the putting green. Uh, we just ask that uh, you don't hit them onto the range uh, because the range balls were sharing the range balls with the other part of the facility for the public and member part of the facility. And uh, if Pro V1 practice balls get in, in their range balls, they're probably going to put them in their pocket. And so we don't want that to happen. Of course, the, the lower right uh, is uh, a portion of our tee box. Got about 100 and I'd say 30 yards of, of teeing ground there. Uh, uh, it's ample space uh, for you to, we start at the beginning of that uh, tee box, work our way to the back. And by the time we get to the front, the tee box is grown over and it's perfect again. So we've got enough uh, grass here for sure. All right, uh, well, we list our North South tournament, which is one of the student events that is uh, really well known in the spring semester. It's really a week long competition, uh, pitting the students from the North against the students from the South. And I think right now the Northern students have a little advantage uh, in the number of wins that they've had. Um, historically, uh, two of our faculty members, uh, I've been uh, uh, captain of the South, and then uh, one of our other staff members has been rotating through as, as captain of the North. And so it's really great that, that, that we get involved in the competition also. But, you know, you can see some of the pictures down there. We, we have a, a, a family dinner or, or a team dinner there. I think one of those photos shows dodgeball. Uh, so it's a week-long competition. I, and I also know that uh, flag football has been uh, taking place in the past on the football field under the lights at night. And uh, in the past, we've had some injuries because everyone gets so uh, pumped up to play. And I don't recommend trying to get hurt while you're playing football before a golf tournament. But, you know, if, if that's what you want to do, you go ahead and do that. But honestly, it's a Ryder Cup style format. Uh, Friday uh, afternoon is alternate shot. Uh, Saturday is going to be a best ball format, and then Sunday is going to be singles. And so it works just like the Ryder Cup. You've got to, uh, you, you have to uh, win by at least a half point in order to maintain the, uh, um, the cup. And of course, there you see the trophy right there, the North South trophy. All right. So the reasons why you're going to come to a PGA golf management uh, program are to earn that, uh, the paper, the diploma, you want to be credentialed. And of course, then you're looking at becoming a PGA member. And of course, you can see a, a picture of our students uh, after graduation, uh, huddling around the camel uh, mascot out there in front of the convocation center. Uh, one of our students, uh, Ben Pollen on, on uh, standing on top of the, the camel after graduation. It's a great photo there. Um, if you didn't know, hey, the PGA of America has been around a long time. There's around 28,000 uh, uh, PGA professionals, uh, apprentices, and students that are, are you know, working in the golf industry. You know, I've got a listing of the career paths there. Uh, most of our students are going to start out and work in a green grass golf operation as an assistant golf professional. 
of course. You don't want to be an assistant. Uh, uh, that I hope that's not going to be your long reign or long term goal is to be an assistant. You want to rise up through the ranks, become a head golf professional at uh, at a facility, maybe a director of instruction, maybe the director of golf, or um, uh, possibly the general manager of your facility and run the entire operation. But of course, there's also uh, I would call non-traditional career paths, but maybe you want to work for a, a golf equipment uh, sales as a sales rep. Um, we've had people work in the past and work for uh, EasyGo and selling golf carts in, in Yamaha in a golf cart uh, company. Uh, we've got the, the president of uh, Mitchell Golf and uh, is uh, one of our students. So there's also uh, got somebody that works in, the, in Puma selling the uh, – Cobra Puma equipment and, uh, and soft goods. So there's, uh, there's other opportunities other than working in green grass. Uh, maybe you're interested in the next slide. How much money am I gonna make if I get into this and start working in the golf business? And so I've got a couple of different columns there for those uh, different uh, career opportunities that, uh, that I showed previously. Now, the 25% and over means that 25% uh, of the people that reported as, per se, a general manager earned over 144000 Now, I think uh, our students, as graduates of PGA Golf Management Programs and the latest education uh, components, they're going to be in line to be earning over that 25% uh, uh, column there. Um, you're going to rise up and get into that column faster than, uh, than other students or than others that entered the uh, uh, PGA membership uh, in different ways. Um, uh, I, I think all of us would say, hey, that uh, general manager job, 144000 that's pretty good. But uh, even the head professional job at $97,000, uh, sales rep job looks really good at 101000 but the assistant golf professional job at 47,000, depending on where you are around the country, is, is a good start for sure. Uh, we have a lot of students that want to be directors of instruction or teaching professionals. And of course, you can see that you can, you can make a nice living doing that also. I didn't list uh, the, uh, the slide here, but a lot of folks uh, want to go work in the New York uh, metropolitan area, great clubs there. Um, if you worked in that area, the uh, salary levels are a lot higher for each of these positions just based on the cost of living. And so I know the general manager, the director of golf and head professionals were, were earning near uh, $200,000 and higher in those areas. And only also because the cost of living is, is so great there. So, hey, we've uh, had uh, around 375 graduates of our program since we started in uh, uh, the fall of 99. Uh, uh, I've got up there, placement rate is 100%. If you're going to graduate from our program and decide you're going to go work in golf and uh, uh, pursue employment in the golf industry, then uh, placement is 100%. You know, you're going to get out there. And uh, again, I, I said it before, some students are working at their uh, – one of their internship sites. They've already uh, built relationships with the golf professionals there and the members uh, there. So they, they might feel comfortable there. Um, and that might be their starting point to get into the industry and they might have great opportunities there. So, you know, I've got a couple of pictures up here on the left. Uh, we've uh, had the head, head golf professional at Hazel team national. They hosted the Ryder cup a few years ago in 2016 and, and, uh, Chandler actually took uh, two of our students as interns there for the uh, for that summer in in fall. So that was a great experience for them. And of course, uh, we actually have Chandler coming on uh, campus on uh, I think a week from uh, today. Actually, and he's going to talk with our students. Uh, the center pitcher there is Jorge Parada. Jorge is a director of instruction. He's one of the young uh, forty teachers under forty uh, from Golf Digest. Uh, just a great golf instructor. He's worked at Liberty National in the past and uh, TPC uh, Sawgrass as the director of instruction. Uh, I show Ben Pollan. Ben's one of our graduates that uh, is uh, working his way out of the tour. He's played in the PGA Championship three times and is just a great, uh, great person. Uh, I, have, I think this past summer he worked in uh, over in Wyoming um, working on his game there. 
Uh, I, I'm really proud of the guys in the lower right here, the Operation 36 founders, Ryan Daly and, and Matt Reagan. Um, they're both students, both of our uh, uh, graduates of our program, but Ryan actually worked uh, for us as the internship coordinator uh, after he graduated. Uh, he went out and, and uh, was a, a teaching professional for two years working in golf techs, and, and then I invited him to come back and and uh, be our internship coordinator. And Ryan was with us for about 10 years, but during that time, he developed this uh, long-term uh, development program that uh, has become Op36. Uh, one of our students, uh, when he was a senior, uh, started working with Ryan, and then they developed this and 10 years later, 11 years later, Op36 is a uh, platform that's now available in, I think it's 575 golf courses around the world. And if uh, uh, I, I definitely recommend uh, after uh, or at some point in the future, go ahead and check them out and see what the Op36 is all about. It's one of the things that we actually use uh, their platform and, and do some things with our students and player development based on the Op36. And uh, so I invite you to, to check that uh, out for sure. All right, so what's next? Uh, so today is a nice uh, virtual uh, uh, campus visit essentially is what we're doing tonight with the webinar. Uh, we do recommend that you're gonna at some point, take a private visit, come on campus, see what we're all about. You definitely want to check out uh, campus and see, look at the buildings and get a, get a feel for who we are. Um, visit with us as faculty members, uh, visit with the students if you get a chance to do that. But you, you definitely want to play the golf facility because if you're going to be with us for four years uh, on campus, you want to make sure that you like the golf facility. You've got to like the golf facility. Um, um, I, I do invite you if uh, um, you're, you're not a fall 22 person or even if you are, hey, we're going to have a summer experience this summer, June 27th through the 29th. Uh, I think it's $400 to register, uh, but we're going to give you three days of what it's like to be a student. Uh, we'll put you in, uh, in some classroom time. Uh, we'll play golf. We're actually going to uh, look at your golf uh, game. And so... Uh, it kind of immerses you into in what it would be like to be a student here. And of course, then you get to stay in the dorms also. Uh, I will not be staying in the dorms. Kevin, are you staying in the dorms? Yes, I will be staying in the dorms. It's uh, <laughs> that's uh, the, the one thing that uh, that gets me a little bit. I haven't slept in a twin long in about I, well, I sleep in one once a summer um, for about seven, eight years now. But uh, yeah, summer experience is so much fun. Uh, we get a bunch of students together on campus. You stay in the dorms. You eat at the dining hall. Uh, we play a ton of golf. We get you on our um, on all of our technology, on our track man, on our sand putt lab. Uh, get you a little bit better. Uh, get you in a class with Mr. Jones, uh, the entertainer of the of the group, and uh, it's it's just a ton of fun. Uh, we usually take a little trip uh, up to Apex, which is about a thirty five minute drive. Uh, they have a par three course called Knights Play. Uh, it's not in the best shape, but it's uh, it's a par three course and it's under the lights. So by the time we finish, the lights are on uh, and that's a different experience playing at night. Uh, and the, the students have a lot of fun doing that. Um, we uh, we get a little competitive. Uh, all of our staff uh, usually has a, a dollar or two riding on the on the match. Um, so I, I will say I, I beat our, uh, our other uh, staff member last time on the ninth hole. Uh, we were playing six iron challenge, so six irons only. So it oh, was wow. uh, it was quite the experience. I, uh, I drained a six iron uh, putt from about 15 feet to, uh, to win that match. He was not very happy. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, summer experience is a ton of fun. Um, you get to meet a bunch of students. You get to hang out with us. Uh, I, I highly recommend it for anyone who's, who's thinking about Campbell. All right. Um, that's, that's center bullet. Uh, I want you guys, uh, anyone that's thinking about, uh, uh, going to school at Campbell, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you owe it to yourself to look at some of the other universities also, so you can compare, uh, what, what we offer here to the, to the other universities, meet their faculty, play their golf course, please play their golf course. So you can compare, 
um, what our golf course, our, our golf course is excellent. I want you to compare the golf courses at the other facilities, uh, ask them about uh, access to their facility. So ask the same questions you're going to ask us, ask those other uh, 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 faculty members at the other schools also. And so uh, what's next? Uh, if you haven't applied to Campbell, well, apply to the university. Um, that's, uh, that's step one. Once you're accepted to the university, then apply to uh, PGA Golf Management. We've got a very short application and handicap verification form. Again, you have to be a 12 handicap or better in order to be accepted into our program. Um, in the upper right, hey, follow us on social media. Our students are posting a lot of their activities on social media and in tournaments. And, and uh, so you can see that they're doing a lot of stuff and it's a very active group that, that we have here at the university. All right, now, when you do have some questions after this, uh, there's uh, my name, Ken Jones, again, there's my email address, jonesk at campbell.edu. My office phone is there. You know what, I'm not in there that much, but if you call and leave a message, then uh, it'll come uh, through a voicemail to my cell phone. Uh, there is my cell number right there. If you do have any questions or you're in town and, and uh, you had not uh, uh, and, and you need something, possibly you might need to get on the golf course, then uh, send me a message and I'll get you out there. Uh, when you do visit, uh, bring your clubs and we'll get you out there. We'll get your whole family out there. Make sure that you go all can enjoy it. It's not going to cost you anything to come play golf at, at Campbell. So that really wraps up. Uh, about 36 slides of information about Campbell University and then the PGA Golf Management Program. I can tell you right now, it's, uh, we've been going around 57 minutes. And uh, Kevin, were there any questions that, uh, that needed to be answered? Uh, there were uh, two questions, uh, both pretty simple. Uh, they're over in the Q and A section. Uh, one was just, are we going to have okay. a recording of the slideshow? I said yes. We'll be uh, we'll be at that on our website tomorrow. Uh, I actually put that on my to do list already. And then uh, I had a question about scholarships. So um, I, I know you and I are not scholarship experts by any straight yeah. or uh, any any uh, <laughs> stretch of the imagination. So um, uh, kind of those admissions questions, those scholarship questions, financial aid. Uh, are best directed towards um, our, our colleagues over there. Uh, they can get you straightened out. That's for sure. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight uh, for our webinar. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, uh, please send, uh, send me an uh, email right there, jonesk at campbell.edu. Uh, if I don't know the answer, then I'm going to forward it to somebody and, and uh, make sure that uh, you can get your answers uh, uh, to those questions. Again, uh, we want to see you on campus. Um, uh, please schedule through the uh, admissions folks. And uh, again, their schedule usually uh, when they're available on, on those days are going to be 11 o'clock or 3 o'clock appointments. Um, I think the 11 o'clock probably works, works best for us, and that would allow you to go ahead and play golf afterwards. And so I look forward to having you on campus, uh, um, uh, hopefully in fall 20. Two, and if uh, you're still in high school, then possibly later than after that, uh, 23 or uh, in essence, uh, 24 or later. So, uh, again, thank you for uh, staying with us tonight and then uh, uh, listening to everything about Campbell University and PGA Golf Management. Thank you.